I'm in the kitchen with this amazing spaghetti squash that I grew myself. I am so proud of this that I actually dreamed about it the day I picked it. It's got little curly cues on it and it's the biggest spaghetti squash I ever grew. I've grown some pretty decent zucchini in my day, but this, this is a prize for me anyway. So I'm going to prepare this two different ways. I love beans. My husband hates beans. So I'm going to make something with these gorgeous tomatoes from my garden also and some nice black beans and some olives and it's going to be really pretty. And for him, I'm going to do something in a cream sauce, which is always one of his favorites. But I'll show you how I do both of them. And you can do things your own way. And you certainly don't have to stick to spaghetti squash. You can use it on any kind of pasta as well. But for today, this is what I'm making. And I'm very, very happy about it. So I'll be back after I get this squash cut in half. Oh, I don't know. I can do it. I will do it. <laughs> be helpful to actually show you how this is done because they're really pretty hard. First thing to do is to cut a little spot off the bottom so that you've got a stable base to work from. Then cut off the top and that gives you a point to work toward. Then you're going to stab it with a really sharp knife and once you've worked your way in you're able to start heading in that direction toward the area that you've already cut. So you can see, even with my really sharp knife, I'm having a rough time with it. Now I've come to here. Now I'm going to go in the other direction. It's well worth it, though. There. Now that I'm through it, I might even be able to split it. Let's see. There. There's the inside of my beautiful squash. So I'll come back in a minute to actually, you know what, I'm just going to work you right through it. I'm going to scoop the seeds out and then because this is such a big squash, I'm going to bake it on a baking sheet in the oven. What I will be doing is adding some water to this sheet so that it's going to steam it. So I'll be putting this down like that. And I'll also be poking some holes in it to let the steam out. That is one big squash. I'm going to set the oven for 350 and this might take an hour so I'm going to check on it in about a half hour and I will know how it's doing by poking a fork into it. I could even turn it over and poke a fork in it and see how it's doing but I'll show you what it looks like when it's done and I'll tell you how long it took. So I'll be back in however long it takes took a little bit less time than I thought it would. It was probably, should have really looked at the time when I put it in the oven. I'm thinking it was about a half hour. It could have been 45 minutes, but look at this. In case you've never done this before, super, super easy. I have another video that I did um, squash bread and, you know, instead of zucchini bread, really good. Like my green tomato bread instead of zucchini bread. And so this is all you need to do. It's super hot because it just came out of the oven. And you don't want to overcook it because then it's going to be mushy. So this is just perfect. And while I'm doing this, I've got butter melting for my husband's cream sauce. And I'm going to try to do it with gluten-free flour, which I haven't done before. So. It's an experiment, and actually it looks like I need to switch over to that, and I'll come back to this. So I used Bob's Red Mill, and that's the one-to-one -one baking flour, which is pretty convenient um, 
if you're, oh, I want to add my garlic to this too. So if you're crunched for time, or if you don't like mixing your own flowers, not everybody does. I, I like mixing my own flowers. I'm just always um, looking for the perfect texture. But this is really very good. Let me put that on low. I don't want to burn anything. So I like to put the garlic in first because it's going to flavor the butter. And I, I just like the garlic to be cooked nicely. So there it is. That's one clove of garlic. And he's really lucky. I even found some dried shiitake mushrooms in the cabinet. And I chopped one up fine. And that's going to rehydrate in the... Um, whoa, getting brown. So I'm going to move it over to here. And I'm going to add the flour. So I have four tablespoons of butter and six tablespoons of flour. And this is more a brown roux than a white roux because the butter browned a little bit. But that's okay. It just means that the um, milk solids caramelized. And that tends to add a little bit more complexity. It did not burn. And so I'm going to start slowly adding my milk this. So let's see how that looks. Hopefully this is going to work. I have not done this before. Looks like it's thickening right up. I'm hoping not to get a gelatinous mass. If I do, I will add more milk. And if worse comes to worse, I'll stick it in the blender. I rarely give up. There's always a way. Oh, it's still going. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I think you can see it. I got a new selfie stick, so I'm really pleased with this. It's got a longer tripod, so that's why this is a little further back, and you can actually see what I'm doing. We also got some new lights in the kitchen. My life is just getting better and better. I'm so lucky. This is like pudding. I might be adding more milk to this. Kind of lumpy. That looks okay. Now, if you're vegan, you could do this with coconut oil. And if you don't like the taste of coconut, you can get refined coconut oil. You can use any kind of nut milk. <coughs> Sorry. Those autumn allergies, boy. It is the time of year. Well, it's lumpier than I'd like it to be. But what I can do very easily is just stick this in the blender, and I may well do that. Let's see what it tastes like. It tastes good. It needs a little salt. But I'm not even going to add any salt to it because my husband and he is going to add a whole lot of cheese to this so that is fine yeah that actually looks pretty good it, it is a little bit lumpy but that is not the end of the world that looks good dare next thing I'm gonna do is move directly into my my sauce, I am starting with a little bit of avocado oil because I really don't like to, I love my olive oil, but I want to finish it with the olive oil because the olive oil, when you cook with olive oil, you end up um, just destroying all the beautiful polyphenols. It's not chemically stable and all those heart healthy antioxidants just end up getting destroyed. So I start off with the avocado oil, which has its own health benefits, but it's also got a higher um, smoke point, and it, it's 
going to hold up better. So here we go. And I, I will then add the, uh, the um, olive oil and get my nice polyphenols in. There we go. So I'm heating up my garlic first. And I went outside and cut a little bit of Swiss chard. And I'm going to just slice it right into here. Cutting it nice and thin. These scissors get such a workout. I must use them every day. I chop up salads right in the bowl. I like to just chop like that. My dogs come running when they hear me doing that because I, I often um, give them the stems of whatever I'm making and they just love that. This is what happens when dogs live with a vegetarian. <laughs> Every kind of veggie is their favorite thing. I'm surprised nobody's standing at my feet right now. Usually they are. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Yes, it is. I like it. I'll save that stem for one of the dogs. Next I'm going to add my yellow tomatoes. And I also chopped up a red tomato. This one was sitting on my windowsill. It is that time of year. And, oh, isn't that pretty? And this one fell off and was on the ground, so I just picked it up and put it on the windowsill to sit for a couple days. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Going to add my olives, which I took half the can of olives and just chopped them in half. You know, for me, it's not just the flavor, it's the colors. It's it's really remember how I was peeling the um all the beautiful meat out of this and I left the other one over there? This is what happened. This got overcooked. Luckily it was only the center that got overcooked. When you take it out of the oven or out of the pot, depending on how you're preparing it, you absolutely want to take it out of the water. Otherwise, it's going to continue to cook, and that's what happened. So poor me, I'm going to have to make some spaghetti squash bread. Not that I mind. But we have enough left here that I've got more than enough for tonight's dinner. So I asked my husband to come down and try his cream sauce. Okay. Give it a little whirl here. Mix this up a little bit. And this is gluten free. He doesn't really like gluten free, but I'm telling you, it's really good. Mushroomy. Good, good. So the mushrooms are still rehydrating, but they really got nice and poofy. Here, I'll give you one of the mushrooms and see if it's hydrated yet as I splatter the kitchen. That's a good roux. Well, the roux that started the cream sauce. Well, obviously, he's still eating it, so it must be good. <laughs> and here's the other, what, what were you going to say? More hydration. Oh, more hydration. Okay. So we're not ready to eat yet. We're just tasting. So we're going to let his hydrate a little bit longer. And here's mine. Thank you. Oh, man. That is a garden in my mouth. It's perfect. Both these recipes will be on the website. And if you haven't seen my spaghetti squash video, take a look at it because that's a really good recipe, too. Spaghetti squash is low in um, carbs. It's got vitamins and nutrients. It is a really versatile vegetable and underutilized too. Make sure you scrape everything out because you can get right down to that rind. So give it a try and enjoy.